And he joins us now to talk about the all-new special TMZ Investigates, Who Really Killed Michael Jackson? Harvey Levin joins us right now from TMZ. Harvey, how you doing this morning? I'm good, Brad. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me because this is a special that I'm really excited to see. Again, it premieres tonight uh, on Fox, 7 o'clock Central Time, when people are listening to this. Let's talk about Michael Jackson, because the moment that he died, very few times in, in your lifetime will an icon pass away, and you remember everything about that moment, right? People know where they were when Elvis passed away, when JFK was assassinated in Dallas. I remember the day Michael Jackson died all those years ago. Can you walk me through your memories of hearing about the King of Pop's untimely death? Well, we broke the story, so I remember it vividly. Um, you know, when when we when we found out he died, um, we thought initially it was just a heart attack, um, and we broke that story, and then immediately started looking at what really happened, and then we started hearing about all these drugs. But the reality is, we knew Michael had a problem before he died, because in the months leading up to his death, he was going to this Beverly Hills dermatologist named Arnold Klein, and Klein would would just pump Michael with massive doses of Demerol to get him high for three hours at a time. And we, along with others, had cameras in Beverly Hills, and you'd see Michael go into Klein's office looking fine, and he'd come out looking like a zombie. He could could barely talk. So we knew something was up. Um, But the extent of it is just shocking. And the re- and, and the, the reason we're doing this special is, is that Conrad Murray, the doctor who basically took all the blame for this, was so late to the game. Michael was, Michael needed opioids in 1984 because he had been terribly burned during this shoot of a Pepsi commercial. But doctors should have weaned him off it, and they didn't. And a lot of them didn't because they were getting access to Michael, and to be around a big celebrity was intoxicating for them. And so a lot of these doctors, certainly Klein, would ingratiate themselves with him. And one of the ways they do it is by giving him the drugs he wanted. And he wanted them because he was an addict. And he was an addict because of these doctors. And look, I mean, one of the people we have on is Debbie Rowe. And he, she is, um, she's never spoken before. She's Michael's ex-wife and the mother of two of his kids. And Debbie Rowe worked for Dr. Arnold Klein for 27 years. That's how she met Michael. And she talks about what went on in that office and how Klein so wanted to be around celebrities to a point where celebrities would call him and say, look, I'm having a party on Saturday night. Um, Can we get some party drugs? And you're invited. And they'd go to the party and there'd be 90 Percocet in a candy dish. That's how ridiculous this got where doctors wanted to become best friends with these celebrities both for the thrill of it and also luring in other celebrity patients i mean it's it's an incredible story i mean conrad murray again the doctor who was sentenced for manslaughter uh in in the california courts um, right it is here from houston texas i mean i remember the story very vividly because there's the houston connection there um right. how much though because michael passed away during his preparation for his 50 shows this is it tour how much of that right. how much of that was a uh, a factor in his untimely demise i mean did that i don't know exacerbate the drug use because he's doing these rehearsals he's getting ready for his final set of shows you have really hit on something brad i mean this is, he was never going to do that tour He was too weak, too strung out at death's door. And we have a couple of segments in this on what the producers of this tour were doing. And it's shocking. We got these depositions. They knew he was strung out. They knew he couldn't function. And they ignored it. And when they were confronted with their very own emails chronicling all of this, they had a series of memory lapses. And we have the videotape depositions of this. You're just, 
not going to believe it. Oh, my goodness. Now, why did Conrad Murray, why was he kind of the um, the scape, I wouldn't call him the scapegoat, but the fall guy for, for the majority of things. If you said there was this kind of larger, I don't want to say conspiracy, right. but, but, but larger thing go at play with different doctors and the concert promoters, why was Conrad Murray the guy who took the fall for everything? Uh, boy, you are asking good questions. Um, because, you know, we talked to the lead detective in the case. And he said the reason is that all they wanted to focus on was that moment in time. But even that lead detective says it was really unfair. And this is the guy that arrested Conrad Murray, said it was really unfair to lay all the blame at Conrad Murray's doorstep. And this detective is saying that what these other doctors and others did made his death, as he put it, inevitable. That, my, that He says it was a miracle Michael didn't die sooner. And so, you know, they, for better or worse, prosecutors chose to do that. And even in the case, they, the judge would not allow uh, Conrad Murray's lawyer to call some of these other doctors to the stand to show the jury what really happened to Michael. So Murray couldn't bring Arnie Klein to the stand. He couldn't bring any other doctors to the stand. He couldn't bring people from the production company to the stand. They just wouldn't let him do it. Now, I know that, you know, there's no statute of limitations on on crimes of, of murder and things like this. And from what well, you're but this isn't murder. There is a statute of limitations on involuntary manslaughter. So th so that's what I was going to ask. It has there been anybody who pursuing uh, wrongful death or even I mean, because to me, if you are overdosing somebody and you and you are aware of the fact that you were doing that, I mean, I don't know how that doesn't constitute as as murder, I guess it would be involuntary manslaughter. You're not trying to kill them, but you know You're that this could. You're not trying to kill somebody, right? You know right. that this could. Then. They just didn't do it. I mean, look, they they didn't do it, um, and you know, it might also be a tricky prosecution because you know, a, a doctor like Arnold Klein, for example, could say, you know, the Demerol didn't kill him, and he'd be alive if he hadn't taken propofol. Now, Murray has a really. We have Murray on on the show. Oh, wow. And Murray has kind of an interesting, uh, 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 he has an interesting version of what happened, that he was not the one who in, who infused Michael with that propofol. He says in the three days leading up to his death, he actually tried to wean him off it. He says Michael did it himself. And because he was out of the room for a time. And, you know, his point is, which is an interesting one, he said, the proof of that is that Michael had no propofol in his brain because he had just slammed so much propofol in the system that he went into cardiac arrest before uh, the propofol could get into his brain. So, you know, he's got a whole other theory. You could buy it or not buy it. But whatever you buy, you can't ignore what had happened to Michael for a quarter century. You know, I mean, it's just a sad story of, of, of an icon of 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 not just this these states but in the United States but all over the world Michael Jackson was beloved and that's why this story continues to be interesting to everybody and uh, I'm excited to check out what y'all have put together and and to really see uh, the story I mean the, the the true story who really killed Michael Jackson TMZ investigates it premieres tonight at seven o'clock on Fox Harvey thank you so much for joining us and um, really really looking forward to this special. Thanks so much, Brad. Really appreciate it. Have a good one. Harvey Levin, everybody. You too.